Thank you. Chris, can I invite you down as well? That would be great. And then we'll start our briefing before the service. If you were in the um, reception into full connection this morning, this is those notices bits before we start the service. So please bear with us as we, as we welcome you. So my name's Christine Dutton. I'm the connectional rep along with my colleague, Gary Hopkins. And we're here to welcome you on behalf of the Methodist Conference. A huge welcome to St. Andrew's Schiffnell and a huge thanks to Reverend Chris Thorpe, who's the vicar here, Gavin, who is coordinating the tech team at the back and live streaming for us, Sue for playing for us, and the whole congregation here at Schiffnell, who together with the Methodist Church have been preparing really hard for this day. We thank them for all their efforts. So I'd like to invite Chris to offer a word of welcome, give us some practical information. Chris, thank you. It's lovely to welcome you to St Andrews and so good to be together. It feels a great privilege to us to be hosting this ordination and perhaps this can be a sign of things to come. Let's pray, shall we, that that will be the case. Um, on a purely practical level, some of you will have discovered the loos in that corner of the room and there's one outside as well in the churchyard um, just through that door there. In the case of an emergency, we will um, make announcements, but all the doors are open, and please do make your way um, directed by the stewards. Um, and we are so pleased that you're here. Thank you. So we are delighted that so many people are able to be here. Our ordinands, friends, families, guests from the churches that have supported them to this point thank those who will be sharing in today's service, our former president and vice president of conference, Richard Teal and Carolyn Lawrence. Richard and Carolyn know, like our ordinands, what challenges COVID brought as they learnt how to hold and lead the church during 2020-21 from their own homes. We're delighted they're sharing with us. We welcome guests from overseas, ecumenical guests and representatives from the World Church, people from the local circuit and people from here at St Andrews. And you'll have seen that this uh, service is being BSL signed, where we give a huge thanks to Roz and Trudy, who are over here, but will be up on the screens wherever you are, so you'll be able to rejoice with, uh, with that gift. Uh, you will be finding out that during the service we'll all be doing some sign language as well, so please bear with us as we, uh, as we do that and we learn together. Um, Jane Krask, who was due to be our preacher today, unfortunately tested positive with COVID at the end of the week, and I will be interpreting her address on her behalf. I've been in touch with her as she had sent the service to the BSL signers, we thought that this was a way of honouring both Jane's work and the work that the signers had done in advance. She sends a message, uh, which is to the ordinance, and I'll read that out when they come in. But it is good to be here. If you have got a mobile phone, if you could switch it to silent or check it's on silent, now would be a good time. The service will proceed largely unannounced. Please stand as indicated if you are comfortable, um, except at point 19, where we ask you to remain seated so that we can see all of our newly ordained presbyters. The epistle is read by the Bishop Dr. Gordon Wong from the Methodist Church in Singapore, and English is his first language, so for this ordination service you will hear that uh, reading read in English. Ordination is into an order, into the community or college of presbyters, and the assisting ministers who will come with the ordinance lay hands as well on the ordinance as a visible sign of this. This service includes the celebration of Holy Communion. God invites all to meet him at his table, and that includes you, whether you're someone who regularly takes communion or you've never taken communion before, you are very, very welcome. Ordinands and their guests will receive at the communion rail. They will come forward and there will be four additional distribution points. The stewards will direct you to where that would be. If you would prefer to, read, to receive a blessing rather than communion, if you keep your uh, order of service in your hand, just bring that uh, with you. 
There are individual gluten-free wafers, and there is non-alcoholic communion wine, which is served in individual glasses. And if it's easier for you to receive communion in your seat, please indicate to a steward, and we will ensure that that happens. At the end of the service, there will be a retiring offering which goes to the Methodist Church Fund. You can either do that online, as was the case this morning, uh, or there will be um, baskets at the back. So, and then it gets a bit more complicated, so please bear with me. I'm sorry these are so long. Refreshments after the service, which is very important, will be served in two locations, uh, and I want to thank the catering teams in advance for their work. So, Pam and Kevin and Julia and their guests will be hosted in the Youth Centre, which will be going out of this door at the back. George, Latika and Emily and their guests will be at Trinity Methodist. That's out of this door. Both are a short walk away. There will be stewards to guide you. But if you are here as a conference rep, a volunteer, just here to rejoice with the ordinance, please feel free to go to either venue. We're all here to worship and participate in this service and Richard Teal has given me special directions that I've got to get this right and if I don't, he's going to do it for me when he comes in. So on page six of your order of service booklet, you'll be asked to acclaim, they are worthy and we will uphold them for our ordinance. Now, you may know these ordinance really well or you may not have met them before. You can be sure that the church has tested their call and it's right that you respond with enthusiasm or robust energy. So we're going to have a practice. Richard says I've got, we've got to have a practice. So um, if I get my book... So, when Richard says, do you believe and trust that they are, by God's grace, worthy to be ordained, we say together, they are worthy. And when Richard says, will you uphold them in their ministry, we will say, we will uphold them. Very good. And then when we welcome the newly ordained ministers, we do that with applause. And this is not the time to apply British reserve, says Paul Wood. So we want to do that really wholeheartedly and welcome and celebrate with uh, our, new, our newly ordained presbyters. During communion, the hymns and songs are printed from page 18 onwards uh, at the back of the service. Friends, this morning at the conference service, George and Kevin and Julia and Pam, Latika and Emily were received into full connection, marking the covenant of mutual service and support with the Methodist Conference. We seek now to ordain them as presbyters in the Church Catholic. The ordinance, together with the Church, have already recognised and confirmed that they have been given to the church by God as ministers. In ordination, the church celebrates that gift, offers it back to God in thanksgiving, calls on God's spirit to use it in God's own way and receives it back transformed. So we ask you to respect this as a solemn moment which no doubt will be very emotional for many people. We ask you that you don't take any photos or recordings during the service. It is being live streamed and it will be available. But of course, afterwards, you can go outside and indeed in the church, take as many photographs as you like. So as we prepare to worship, we light the candle first lit at the conference service this morning as a symbol of our connectedness as a church, united in the mission of God. We hold a moment of quiet in God's presence as we prepare for this special moment in the lives of our ordinance and of our church.
as the procession enters, I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Let's worship God. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. I welcome you all on this joyful occasion and greet you in the name of God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God of all grace, you call your church to be a holy people, to the praise of your name. In the power of your Spirit, fill our hearts with your love and our lives with your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought 
for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Amen. the Gospel of Christ. Glory to Christ our Saviour. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen 
and have yet have come to believe. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. George, Kevin, Julia, Pam, Latika, and Emily. It's a message from Jane for you. I was honoured to be asked to preach at such a special service for you, and so sorry not to be with you all after all. I will be praying for you that you will know God's presence, peace, and joy as you are ordained this afternoon know that this is a key point in your ongoing journey of discipleship and service. Friends, let's still our hearts and minds as we begin to reflect on those readings. Creator, creating and creative God. We thank you for your holy word. And as we explore and search your scriptures this afternoon, we pray that along with the ordinance, you might speak to us in our need, inspire us afresh. Touch our hearts and strengthen our resolve to follow Jesus, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's such a privilege to share in this service with you, with this whole congregation. And I hope it's already been a day of great joy and continue to be something that you look back on with great delight in the years ahead. At the Queen's Foundation, where you've trained one of your courses, is entitled Preparing for Denominational Ministry. Can you think back that far? And the associated assignments require students to reflect on some suggested subheadings, such as, and you can join in this reflection, why am I a Methodist? And for the ordinance, what is it going to mean to take a public representative role in your denomination? Some of you will remember writing among those subsections, reflecting deeply on those themes. Others may have wiped it from their memories, but you will all have answered that question again and again and again on the journey to today. I wonder what you say now on this point of your ordination. Is it different now you have experienced something of the reality of ministry? Now, after a period of probation, you have come to this point. You have been received into full connection. And this afternoon, you will be ordained with people you know and love around you. But there will be other people who are here to support you and celebrate with you that you don't know. So I'm going to invite you to take a moment to look around. Look into these beautiful faces of this gathered congregation. I invite you all to do this, to look around at these wonderful children of God around you. Find someone you don't know.
Maybe someone you don't know is here to represent the wider Methodist church, other Christian churches. They're here to stand with you, to support you, to uphold you, and to be alongside you in prayer as you take this next step. So as we reflect, we're going to ponder four texts from our readings. And alongside each biblical text, there will be four key words. And it's these four key words as we go through that we're going to learn how to sign as we go through them. And Nick is going to help us with that. He promises me that he's not going to mark you on your uh, efforts, so I take him at his word. The first text is from the passage from 1 Corinthians 12. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but it is the same Lord. So the first word, which is really two words, Jane's taken a bit of a liberty here, is being with. Being with. What was that like, Nick? How did they do? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Being with. Some of you will have explored this phrase used by Sam Wells in his understanding of mission. We're going to look at it in a slightly different way. 1 Corinthians 12 is perhaps the second best-known chapter in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Throughout the passage, we heard many contrasts between one and the many, holding together variety, diversity, one God, one spirit, Many gifts, yet one body. With all the variety, all the members of the one body are to be valued fully and equally. Each one who is ordained is one among the many, the whole people of God. The role of the ordained is being with being with all those others who are gifted by God. You're not called to be above nor below, but alongside and with. Crucially, in this passage, Paul begins the process of undermining subtly and then more obviously the different values that the Corinthian Christians have been giving to different gifts. Paul reminds them they're called to value all sorts of gifts and all sorts of people fully and equally. That is your task to do as you value the God who gives the gifts. The second text is part of an astonishing vision that seems to have acted as a key moment of calling for Isaiah called to be a prophet in the year that King Uzziah died. He had a visionary experience in the temple. A vision of God? Well, Isaiah says this, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. But it's such a vast vision that only the hem of his robe fills the whole temple. It's on an out-of-this-world scale. For Isaiah, this is a vision that inspires him. He becomes sure of his call, astonishing as it seems. It's a real injection of energy that takes Isaiah in a new direction, despite the obstacles that he will face in subsequent verses and chapters. What was it 
that convinced any of us at any particular moment when we were called by God? What convinced us or convinces you to follow Christ, to turn in a new direction, to again make an offer of the gifts we have been given? I ask you to reflect on the moments that have astonished you and inspired you. And for our ordinands, I hope that in the busyness of ministry and the challenges of the current ecclesial landscape that we face, you remember those glimpses of inspiration, those words of affirmation and encouragement along the way, the words of others where you have recognized God's voice. So back to the text. We're going to focus on the hem of his robe for a moment. I wonder if you watch the great British sewing bee. And uh, this is where I have to do an apology to our friends who are watching the live stream from places all over the globe, because there are going to be some British television references, so you might need to have your ordinance help you find them in a moment. But Jane is an avid viewer of the great British sewing bee, and when she's well enough, you're going to be able to quiz her about this, along with Bake Off and Pottery Throwdown. Personally... I can't wait for Tuesday, which is the final episode of Glow Up, when makeup artists will transform their models. And I'm sure Mickey, our assistant secretary of conference, will have watched Blown Away, and Rachel Parkinson as well, where the amazing glass creations that appear from the kiln. And I'm sure that we have some Strictly fans somewhere in the congregation. Whatever it might be for you, we know that in the wake of such programs, the sales of baking ingredients, fabric, eyeliner, will go up because people will have a go as they watch other people share their passion. We find ourselves encouraged to take risks, try out new recipes, discover or rediscover a long-lost hobby. It inspires us to have a go. Part of the role of those who are ordained is precisely to inspire others. So, Nick, can you help us with the word inspire? Oh, I love that. That's a real passion word, isn't it? It feels like it's about passion and inspiring. Thank you. That's what you're called to do. Inspire others. Inspire others to worship and serve the God that we meet in Jesus. You might do that by helping those in churches or in the community see an inspiring vision You may inspire simply by having a go at something yourself, something that comes from sharing your strengths, your passions, your interests. But sometimes you can inspire by honestly sharing out of a place of perceived weakness or fear. Jane shares the story of how once, early in the week before a service, she confided to a church steward about how nervous she was about leading a particular all-age parade service that coming Sunday. When it came to the Sunday, the the steward did what she had refused to do up till then and always asked someone else to do. She stood at the lectern, welcomed the congregation, and introduced the service. Afterwards, she said to Jane, if you can do something that you find really difficult, then so can I. In one sense, it doesn't take being ordained to do that. But being in this public role in the life of the church and the communities that you serve, excuse me, 
means that you are often in the public space where people see you, where you can offer an example. You will be in the place where you have the opportunity to inspire others. The hem of his robe filled the temple. You are called to inspire. The third phrase is also from the same biblical passage. It's the call of the seraphs. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the word associated with this biblical text that Nick will help us with is the facet of looking. And this is the sense of looking as in noticing, isn't it, Nick and Roz? Looking for, looking for, for, thank you. The whole earth is full of God's glory. Really? So often it doesn't look much like it. In the news headlines, in what fills much of social media, when we look at the desperate situation in Ukraine, or those increasingly worried about feeding their families or heating their homes, in our knowledge of the often forgotten conflicts of this world. Sometimes it's hard to look. It's hard to help others to look. But I want to encourage you to keep looking. Discover with others where God's glorious work is going on in the streets and homes and community buildings of your neighborhoods. See where that is happening in the green shoots and the established shoots of the whole Methodist church. Look and see where it is happening across other churches that you work with across the world. Jane reminds you, as if you don't need uh, telling, that this is called theological reflection. And to do it is really important, not just for you, but helping people to see the signs of God at work. Friends, this takes time and reading and thinking, resourcing of yourself in theological disciplines and practices that have been a formal part of your training and formation to this point but in a moment you will promise to continue the studies necessary for this. Keep looking for God. Keep encouraging others in this endeavor. You're called to a lifelong ministry of being with people, inspiring people, looking and discovering with them, leading praise and worship, where you see the glory of God at work. And there's a fourth and final text and a fourth word from the Bible passages set for this service. The text is from the gospel reading from John's story of the risen Jesus, mysteriously meeting his still shattered and confused disciples behind that locked door in the upper room. He says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So the fourth word that we're going to learn and focus on is receive. Thank you, Nick. Long before God calls us, or asks anything specific of us, God in Christ says to us, receive. Receive the air that you breathe. Receive the complex body through which you have the capacity to breathe. 
receive the gift of life. Receive the gift of peace. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive all of creation and redemption. All of God's grace. We receive it long before we know it. Long before we understand it. Long before we are enabled to respond. God enables our living. God has dealt with what is wrong. We receive all of God's creating, nurturing, and redeeming activity long before our commitment to God, there was God's commitment to us. Before you can possibly give out as ordained ministers, you need to recognize what you have received and keep receiving. In order to be able to give, to serve, to offer yourself, you must receive from God. As you receive the Holy Spirit, you become those people who help with others to create communities of peace and forgiveness. And when the gifts of God don't seem enough, because there's too much to do, too many people, too much grief, when it's too overwhelming, God in Christ says again, receive. And in order to do that, we may well need to pause. In ordained ministry, the basic necessity of receiving God's grace, the wisdom and peace of the Spirit, means that we must give time to pause, time to pray, time to rest, time to be held by the God who loves us. If not, we have nothing to give. So four texts and four words. And as the experienced and gifted teacher that Jane is, she summarizes all four of them in case you forget them. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. Varieties of services, but the same Lord. You're called to be with the people of God. The hem of his robe filled the temple. You are called to attend to the visions. Be an example of discipleship and service. You are called to inspire others. The whole earth is full of his glory. You are called as people set aside and resourced by the church to lead God's people to look, discover where God is and what God is about in the world and in the church. And you are called to receive the Holy Spirit receive God's grace and God's abundance in common with us all, with all disciples. It's the heart of your preaching and your pastoral ministry. It's deeply tied up with your prayer lives and with resting in God. George, Kevin, Julia, Pam, Latika and Emily. After all that has happened to you in the past few years, and we recognize that you come as a cohort like a cohort never before to this point in your ministry. You've come to this point of ordination in the Church of Christ. So what changes? You are now, in a sense, fully fledged. It marks a shift in your relationship with the Church both with the Methodist Church and with the whole Church of Christ. You will declare your lifelong commitment to this ministry. The Church marks this point with its own recommitment to you, and we pray 
that God will provide all that you need to continue on the path to which you have been called. And I want to conclude with some words from Ephesians. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Stand. Let us profess the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mr. President, I present to you these persons to be ordained presbyters. The conference has received them into full connection and resolved that they be ordained by prayer and the laying on of hands. George Victor Hines. Kevin Highfield. Julia Irene Reed. Pamela Ann Roberts, Latika Singh, Emily Rosalind Alice Young, sisters and brothers in Christ, these are the persons whom we intend in God's name to ordain to the ministry of Christ's holy church in the order of presbyters. Their call has been tested in preparation for this ministry and they have been found to be of sound learning and faithful to their vocation. We ask you to declare your assent to their ordination. Do you believe and trust that they are by God's grace worthy to be ordained? They are worthy. Will you uphold them in their ministry? We will uphold them. Beloved in Christ, 
The church is God's holy people. The body of Christ, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. All who are received into the church by baptism are called to proclaim the mighty acts of God in Jesus Christ our Saviour and to serve him in the church and in the world. God has called you into the order of presbyters among his people. In his name you are to preach by word and deed the gospel of God's grace, to declare God's forgiveness of sins to all who are penitent, to baptize, to confirm, to preside at the celebration of the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, to lead God's people in worship, prayer and service, to minister Christ's love and compassion, to serve others in whom you serve the Lord himself. These things are your common duty and delight. In them you are to watch over one another in love. In all things, give counsel and encouragement to those whom Christ entrusts to your care. Pray without ceasing. Work with joy in the Lord's service. And let no one suffer hurt through your neglect. This ministry will make great demands upon you and upon those close to you. Yet in all this, the Holy Spirit will sustain you by His grace. I now ask you to declare your lifelong commitment to this ministry. Do you believe that God has called you to be a minister of word and sacraments in the universal church? Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord? I do. do you receive the doctrines of the Christian faith as this church has received them? I do. Will you accept our discipline and work together with your sisters and brothers in the church? Will you be faithful in worship, in prayer, in the reading of Holy Scriptures, and those studies which will equip you for your ministry? Amen. May God, who has called you to this ministry, give you grace and power to do His will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray. On the peoples of the world and the leaders of the nations, gracious God, pour out your spirit. On your holy church throughout the world, gracious God, pour out your spirit. On all whom you have called to be ordained, gracious God, Pour out your spirit on all whom they serve in their ministry, gracious God, pour out your spirit on their families and friends and all who have helped and encouraged them, gracious God, pour out your spirit. Remember, O Lord, what you have wrought in us and not what we deserve, and as you have called us to your service, Make us worthy of our calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. You are the light and life of your people in every age, calling us to declare your acts of mercy and love. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. He called the apostles to witness to his words and deeds, his life, death, and resurrection. Through him you have made your church a royal priesthood for the glory of your name. In the power of your Holy Spirit, you strengthen and shepherd your people by sending apostles and prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers in a succession of truth and grace. By the same Spirit, you have called these your servants to be ministers in your church. Increase in them the gifts of your grace for their life and ministry. <clears throat> Father, send your Holy Spirit upon George for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Father, send your Holy Spirit upon Kevin for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Amen. Amen. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon Julia for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon Pamela for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Amen. Amen. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon Latika for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Amen. Amen. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon Emily for the office and work of a presbyter in your church. Amen.
Gracious God, as you call and ordain these your servants to this ministry, we ask you to fulfill in them the work you have begun. Grant them unfailing love for those people among whom you appoint them as pastors and teachers. May they boldly proclaim your truth and faithfully celebrate your sacraments. Give them wisdom and patience in their witness and service. Sustain and strengthen them at all times, giving faith and perseverance to all who believe in you through their word. And may they be counted worthy at the last to enter into the joy of their Lord. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven. George, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. <laughs> Kevin, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. Julia, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. Pamela, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. Latika, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. Emily, receive this Bible as a sign of the authority committed to you this day to preach the word of God and to celebrate the sacraments. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that you have been ordained as presbyters of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of Christ. Remember your call, declare the good news, celebrate the sacraments, serve the needy, minister to the sick, welcome the stranger, seek the lost. Be shepherds of the flock of Christ, 
As you exercise mercy, do not forget justice. As you minister discipline, do not forget mercy. That when Christ, the chief shepherd, comes in glory, he may count you among his faithful servants. To God be the glory forever. Huge round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful. Was that loud enough? <laughs> because of COVID restrictions, of course, we can't share the peace in the usual way we, we normally do, but we're going to share the peace. And I'd like you to wave at each other, or give each other a wink, or smile, or catch somebody's eye, or whatever, but we're going to do it. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Lord our God, gracious and holy, your power sustains all creation. In love you create all things, and in mercy you redeem them. From age to age you gather a people to serve you, to proclaim your glory, and to reveal your presence in the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, the true shepherd of your people. In him we see your face and hear your word. In compassion he restored us and made us whole laying down his life upon the cross and freely offering himself for all. You did not leave him in death, but raised him by your mighty power to make all things new. Through him, you sent your Holy Spirit to lead your people into all truth, calling among us pastors and preachers and teachers of your word and with them and all your people on earth and in heaven, we join the ceaseless song of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, 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 in the highest. Father, we give you praise as we call to mind how at supper with his disciples, your son Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, recording Christ's offering of himself and celebrating this feast of our redemption, we offer ourselves to you through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world Send your Spirit upon us, gather us into unity, strengthen our faith, and sustain our hope. Bring us with all who place their hope in you to the promised feast of your kingdom, where forever we may offer you our praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is the true bread from heaven.
body of Christ broken for you.
Let us pray. Lord our God, strengthen the hands that have received these holy gifts, that we may faithfully serve you all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>